The Perfect Victim looks at the cases of three women who endured years of domestic violence and ultimately murdered their abusers. To continue the discussion, we have Judge Nancy Gertner, who teaches criminal law at Harvard Law School and who studied and worked on domestic violence cases. Judge Gertner, welcome. Great to be here. Pull back and give us a definition of battered woman syndrome. Battered woman syndrome is essentially a subcategory of post-traumatic stress disorder. Instead of having been beaten on the battlefield, you were beaten in your home, and that skewed your mm. responses in the home in the way that they did for Vietnam veterans and other kinds of veterans. The women who kill are essentially those for whom the system may well have failed. What are the circumstances under which it's reasonable to kill? That's a whole different issue than the broad question of domestic violence. Is she doing this because there was no place else to go? And you've used battered woman syndrome as a defense. 20 years ago, the case that I used it in was the first case of its kind in Massachusetts. It had been around the country before then. Mm -hmm. Woman was charged with killing her husband, in fact, getting someone else to kill her husband, mm -hmm. which was one of the cases in the film as well. She subjectively believed that she was in danger, that she had no way out, and had to kill him or else she would be herself killed or her child would be harmed. Uh, it had never been introduced into evidence before. Uh, we had to persuade the judge that it was a valid psychological syndrome uh, and enable us to present it. How has the legal system changed for victims of domestic violence in the last 30 years since these women were convicted? A critical part of the, this film was that they were not able to introduce evidence of battered women syndrome in their cases. So they weren't able to use it either to bear on whether or not their killing their husband was justified, whether or not it should mitigate, make less harsh mm -hmm. the punishment. Now we're in a different phase, and so women who uh, wish to introduce battered women syndrome can do so under some circumstances. It's not, I might add, a complete defense. Instead of being first-degree murder, it takes the crime down to manslaughter. There was a moment in the film where someone said the prison wasn't the right place for, for these women. Um, now, they committed a crime. How do you deal with it? But th that's a great question. These are not likely women who will recidivate, right? This is not a crime that's going to be repeated. It's very much situational. They're, they are likely not to be a public safety harm. It makes me crazy, both it made me crazy as a judge and it makes me crazy now, uh, to, that we rarely have a conversation about what's next. It's as if the only conversation we have is jail, no jail, mm -hmm. as opposed to how much and then what do you do afterwards? And so your question raises the what do you do afterwards? What was your takeaway from the film? On the one hand, you shouldn't kill. There's no question about it. We don't privilege killing under any circumstances. On the other hand, we all should try to understand why they did what they did. I'm afraid of him. I don't know what he's going to do, et cetera. That was terribly important uh, to look at as well. But, you know, I, I, I was a judge for 17 years. I like to step back and say there are many people who we accuse of crime, we convict of crime, essentially under circumstances where the rest of society has failed in some cataclysmic way. So what are the circumstances under which a woman feels she cannot go to a shelter, she cannot get services, the courts will not be responsive? Are those the women who say, I have, I have no choice but to kill? Do you think we have enough services to rehabilitate these, these women? We never do. We put all our money into prisons, and we don't ever put our, our resources, or not as much, and certainly not proportional, into what you do with people who've been subject to this. There's some change now. There are domestic violence courts, problem-solving courts, that look not only at did the defendant do the crime, but what else can we do to prevent it? What can we do to support the victims of it? Not just looking at the criminal justice system, but social services and a much wider range. Judge Gertner, thank you so much for coming here and helping us understand the evolution of the legal and social understanding of, of domestic violence. Thank you.